this is the first episode of my new series, Fix Your Life. And in this series, we are going to be going over the many building blocks it takes to turn your life around and become a successful person. Where I am right now is I had a night out a few days ago and I got very drunk and I took it too far. And this time I, it was just one too many. Um, I decided that alcohol does not do anything for me anymore and it's slowing down all of my progress in life. It has kind of systematically destroyed every area of my life, my career, my relationships, my health, everything really, every aspect of my life, my energy, uh, yeah, and my close ones, my loved ones have been very concerned about me over the past couple of years. I also do understand that it's not enough to just stop drinking. I have to have a plan on what I'm going to replace drinking with. I need a game plan. I need, I need to start building my life, the life that I want. So guys, today is the 5th of November, 6 in the morning. I finish work at four and today I am six months no alcohol <laughs> I actually did it and it was easy that's the best part best decision I made hands down feels like just yesterday I was making that video one year man wow uh this day came around much faster than I initially expected it to when I made the decision to quit alcohol. And it's come around without me even really thinking about it. I've not sort of been counting the days or whatever. It's just suddenly it's here. I plan to make a video on my one year anniversary of quitting for a well, a long time, probably since I actually first quit, I thought, next year I'm going to make a video on this. But now it's here, it's kind of weird, I'll be completely honest. So, I'm quite tired right now. I'm currently in the process of moving my body clock round to a normal one. I've been doing night shifts for the past year, for those of you who don't know. So, if I look like I'm dead, it's because I kind of am. I wanted to make this video and just, I guess, talk about why I stopped and what has happened since I've stopped and of course finishing with will I ever drink again I do strongly recommend if you haven't already that you watch the first installment of this I mean it's not a series but I did make a video on alcohol when I was actually in the midst of my addiction if you haven't watched that video and you can't be asked, fair enough, I will give you a quick rundown. I basically talked about what got me into drinking, why I started, which was just basically because everybody did it and it was what was seen as the cool thing to do. And it took me a few years before I actually really started to love drinking, but in 2019, I got really bad with it and started to drink it a lot to cope with social situations and with my emotions that were quite overpowering at the time. I was going through a breakup at the end of 2019 and I didn't want to or know how to deal with that grief so I basically resorted to alcohol. I just want to make a quick disclaimer by the way that I have nothing against anybody who makes a decision to drink alcohol. I am not judging you at all. I'm talking from my own personal experience. I do have a lot of friends that drink and I know most people do drink or are going to drink at some point and I just want to say I do not judge you I still love you don't worry this is just my personal experience and this is for anybody who wants to quit if you don't want to quit maybe this video is not for you if you do want to quit I think this might be some really valuable information for you I've got some boldies gameplay right here I am a little bit rusty, admittedly, but I decided this week that I was going to sit down and actually play the game again so you can have something to watch in the background while I talk about my story and what's led me to this point. So towards the end of my last video on alcohol, I talked about the fact that I was quite concerned that I would be 
soon going to university and I knew that it was probably going to get worse. I was correct. It did get much worse when I got to university. Uh, university was a height of my drinking, I would say, because of the culture that surrounds going to university, which is go out, get drunk every night, and that's what everybody did. It's what I did because I was scared to not drink. I thought that people would judge me. Funnily enough, before I went to university in August of 2021, I actually stopped drinking for two weeks, but I managed to talk myself back into drinking because I said that if I don't drink and get back into drinking, it's going to ruin my university experience which, it, funnily enough, ended up being the opposite, and drinking was actually what ruined the experience for me. I'm not going to go too much into detail, but I was pretty nasty when I got drunk, and I ended up not making as many friends as I could have done if I was sober, shall we say. I was exhausted all the time, which, of course reflected on my grades and my attendance to lectures. I think I probably showed up to less than 10 lectures in the four months that I was there. This was all building up uh, to December the 31st, 2021, when I went to Basefest New Year's Eve. I drank a lot of vodka and it hit me very, very hard and I basically ended up not being able to stand up. I fell on my face, I fell on my chin, all over the floor. It was very dangerous. Luckily, I had good friends there to look after me, but it could have been much worse. It was such a busy place, and I was unable to stand up. I had to get my chin glued back together the next day on the 1st of January 2022. What a great start to the new year. I remember thinking, this is going to be another one of them years, man, where... It's just going to be terrible, because 2021 was pretty terrible, to be honest, looking back. I made a vow on that day that I was never going to drink vodka again, and I actually stuck to that. I've not drank vodka since New Year's Eve 2021. But I decided that I'm going to keep drinking, but I'm just going to drink beer. So I did, I started drinking beer instead, and... It didn't work, I was just drinking more of it and not only was I getting just as drunk, but I was also getting fat. If there's one good thing about drinking spirits over beer, it's that they're not very high in calories. It got to April 2022 and I was drinking every single night, getting drunk until about five in the morning and then throwing up. I'd pretty much stopped eating at this point. All of my calories that I gained were through drinking. I maybe had like one meal a day, but at this point I was drinking about 12 cans of beer a day easily. And then when I ran out of beer, I would go and drink wine as well. Anything I could get my hands on pretty much. It got to May and I ended up getting myself in a state again where I was too drunk and I didn't know what was going on. I remember getting a taxi ride home and for some reason I was convinced that my taxi driver was going to kidnap me and kill me. So I was trying to quietly take my seatbelt off and prepare for him to turn around and attack me. As I took my seatbelt off, it started making the beeping noise. Obviously when you take your seatbelt off, it starts going bing, bing. And he was like, can you put it back on please? I was like, yeah. And I got home and I didn't think I was that drunk and I decided that I was able to drive. Luckily I didn't drive, but for a split second I thought I'm going to go and drive to the garage and pick myself up a vape because my disposable vape had died. Vaping's for another video by the way. I passed out, I woke up the next day and I had a load of messages off people talking about all the nasty shit that I did the night before. And I, in that moment, I said, I'm done drinking. And I meant it. And all my friends were like, oh, yeah, all right, you're done drinking. Till next week. Oh, I give it three weeks and you'll be back in the pub with us drinking, stuff like that. And I said, no, 
If you think that is true, then you don't know me very well. When I commit to a plan, I will not let myself down or anybody else. When Once I said I'm done, I was done. And I was right. I mean, it's it's been 365 days since I made that decision. So now I want to go into how I quit alcohol. I think this part is going to be a really valuable part of the video and is going to be a big help to anybody out there who is trying to quit or wants to quit and quit for good. Now there are of course many different ways to quit alcohol. Some people go to Alcoholics Anonymous, although I don't personally think that that is useful, at least from my point of view, because Alcoholics Anonymous comes down to admitting that you are the problem. When you are not the problem, it is the drink that is the problem. That's what my method of quitting really comes down to. It's not about calling myself an alcoholic. It is just about me saying I'm addicted to a drug. That is what alcohol is. It is a drug. Don't get it twisted just because it's legal. It is a drug just like any other drug that is illegal. The easiest way to quit alcohol from my perspective is to break it down to its purest and simplest form. We're going completely away from the shiny different coloured bottles and the different flavours of vodka that you can get. We're boiling it right down to what it is, and that is ethanol, which is a poison. That is what alcohol is. It is just very, very diluted ethanol. If you drank concentrated ethanol, you would die you would be poisoned. Kind of like how bleach is a poison. It is not that different from bleach. The problem with the way that we live is that people don't see it that way. And the reason for that is because of the way that alcohol has always been marketed and the way that we have been conditioned to see alcohol. You think about it everywhere you look, there's an advert or a billboard advertising a new alcoholic drink. You go out and there's discounts on drinks at a club or a pub or wherever you end up going. It is advertised as this amazing potion that turns you into a sociable person and that will make all of your problems go away. And people bite. I mean, you know, I have been a victim to this and the majority of people that I have met are also victims or have been victims to it as well. Now, I just want to say again, if you enjoy alcohol and you want to keep drinking, then by no means am I telling you that I think you should stop. That has got to be your decision to make, and I respect it as much as I would expect you to respect mine. Alcohol, when broken down into its purest form, ethanol, has no benefits at all. It doesn't do any health benefits for you. It doesn't give you any benefit to your mental health either. There is not one good thing that alcohol can do for you. And you might say, oh, well, it makes me more sociable. Okay, well, let's break that down. Because that is something that I used to say as well. In fact, that was the main thing I said. Before I went anywhere, I would have a drink. Whether that was when I started university and I would go out and meet people at freshers during the daytime. I remember there was like this massive field with loads of activities where you got opportunities to meet people and look at different courses and, you know, clubs that you can join. And I remember drinking just a couple of shots before because I thought if I go there after a couple of shots, then that is going to make me better at talking to people. The problem with this is, is yes, okay, it does work in that moment, but you're going to wake up the next day and you're still going to be just as anxious as the day before. Now, what you should be doing is going out and speaking to people sober so you can increase your social IQ. If you could do that, then talking to people becomes easy anyway. You don't need to drink to be able to talk to people. It shouldn't be that you have to take a drug in order to talk to people. It's something that you have to learn how to do. And if you don't know how to do it, that's fine. It just means that you haven't practiced enough. The problem is, is people don't want to have to put themselves in a position of awkwardness to talk to people. So they just drink instead. I used to do this a lot too. I was never confident with myself. The moment I stopped drinking, I made a point of going out and having conversations with people, asking them things about themselves and things. And people love talking and most social interactions I've had since I stopped drinking have been very pleasant. 
uh, 99% of them, that is. So that's that myth debunked, really. I, I do call it a myth because I think that you don't need to drink to be more sociable. You just need to practice talking to people. And alcohol is just a quick fix, but quick fixes never last long. That's why they're called quick fixes. If you want something to last for life, you have to practice. There's no lift up to success. You've got to take the stairs and you've got to go through the stress. Just remember this one quote. It really helped me when I decided to quit. And that is that the people who get drunk every day crave the feeling that a sober person feels every day. For those of you who know me, I've never been the type to moderate things. I'm either all in or all out. I will either drink every single day or never drink at all. I'll go to the gym seven days a week for three hours a day or I'll never go to the gym. I'll play Geometry Dash for eight hours a day or never play Geometry Dash. There's never an in-between for me and I think that's what made it so difficult for me as well. And that is that I have this thing where I fixate on things like that but my brain can't tell the difference between whether it's a good thing or a bad thing so it can either be a superpower or my biggest downfall and it's it's quite scary i've got to be really careful what i get interested and fascinated with another thing that i used to say to justify my alcohol addiction is that i like to have a beer because it helps me wind down after a long day and once again that wasn't really true. It is more that actually I was just withdrawing from alcohol. I think it's very easy to forget that alcohol is an addictive drug and people sometimes spend their entire lives addicted to a drug without realising. There's some people who are 60, 70 out there that have been drinking every single day after work and it's never even crossed their mind that maybe they're actually addicted to the alcohol. It doesn't really help you wind down at all actually. It, if anything, it screws with your sleep and your hormones and makes you more anxious and uptight, so you require more of it to calm down the next day. You don't need to drink at all. There's nothing... It's not worth it, you know? Once you realise that alcohol doesn't have any benefits and that it's not a good thing at all, it is very, very easy to stop. Because you decide that actually, I just don't want to drink anymore. And you, it's not like you're craving a drink. In fact, I remember it had been, I think, five months. And I was going to a club for the first time in a while. And I was starting to wonder, maybe this is going to be difficult. Because I was going out with my work colleagues who I'd never been... I'd never seen out of work before. I thought maybe it'd be awkward. I got there and I saw everybody just drinking all these beers and vodkas and there's people on the street shouting at each other across the street and I actually felt almost disgusted uh, and pity for these people that were drinking and that was a really weird um realization to be honest that actually there is no part of me that wants to be involved with drinking anymore in fact when i see other people i feel sorry for them <laughs> and that was very powerful but also really sad because you look around and you see everybody drinking and you think am i the only person seeing this and i think <laughs> maybe i am I think that a lot of people refuse to see it, but there are some people that have genuinely convinced themselves that drinking ethanol is a good thing, <laughs> you know? Even some of my friends, my first couple months into being sober, would say, hey, uh, Brandon, is it okay if I have a drink around you? Like, I don't want to set you off. And I'd say, well, yeah, of course, you can have a drink. As long as you don't make me have a drink, you know, it's your choice whether you have one. It's just as long as you don't keep trying to get me to have a drink, that's when we'll have a problem, yeah? But most of my friends were respectful of that. Of course, there were a couple of my friends that were like, oh, come on, just have one drink, man. Reward yourself with a beer. But once again, I don't see 
a beer as a reward anymore. I would drink a beer if I wanted to punish myself. I guess. <laughs> There's no part of me that wants to put that shit in my body. Simple as. And... That's what made alcohol so easy to quit. Sometimes I tell people that I don't drink if they offer it or something and they're like, wow, that's amazing. How do you even do that? What an achievement, things like that. And it's like, but it doesn't really feel like an achievement to me, to be honest. And people will say, well, it is an achievement though. That's really great, well done. I'll say, yeah, but it doesn't really feel like one because it's not something I've tried to do. I just... I just don't want to, you know. I am, like, genuinely repulsed by the thought of drinking at this point because I have completely rewired my brain and my perception of drinking. And I want you guys to understand that it's as simple as that. All you have to do is change the way that you see things. Just remember, that's the only thing that you can control, no matter what it is that you want in life. If you want to change something, just change your perspective. Change the way that you think about something. It's not worth it. It's very dangerous. I have nearly died so many times from drinking alcohol. You wouldn't even believe some of the shit that I've done in my time of drinking. I am lucky to even be alive right now. After a couple of weeks... I felt way better, my energy was high, I was starting to pick up my memory again and stuff, because you have terrible short-term memory when you're drinking like I was, I mean, and long-term, I didn't remember anything. Even now, I think back to 2021, I don't really remember anything, because I was drunk all the time, I don't have many memories at all, even of 2022, because I was drunk all the time. I remember the entire second half of 2022, and all of this year so far, but I don't remember anything in that time that I was drinking. My brain was just getting the shit beat out of it, so you can see why, really. When I quit drinking alcohol, my urge to vape also went away. I realised that I needed to stop vaping so much and start to cut down on that, and that led to eventually quitting, which is going to be the next part of this video, uh, of this series should I say I am going to talk about vaping I'm going to talk about weed which are two other things that I quit I'm probably going to talk about a lot of things it's a brand new series on this channel I was going to upload this on my second channel but I decided that this is very important information for you guys and you need to hear it it might save lives all right if you are young and you haven't touched alcohol yet and you're thinking about it all I'm going to say is it's okay to be curious if you want to try it go for it but be very careful, it's very dangerous stuff, and it picks up way faster than you can believe, alright, if you're in a position now where you're clear-headed, you're focused, you're getting good grades, stick like that, your future self will thank you, you do not want to be sat here at 22 thinking, I wish that I'd have not been drunk, so I could have actually done this or done that, you don't have a lot of time, I know you're probably sitting there now, you might be 16, 17, 18, maybe even younger than 16 watching this. I'm just going to say it here now. You do not have a lot of time. And I know it feels like you do. It feels like you have all the time in the world. You do not have a lot of time. Um, it, it's hard when you're at this age because people are saying, oh, come on, come get drunk with us. Your, your teen years and your 20s are the best years of your life. I'm sorry, but that's just not true. Alright, your teen years and 20s are the years where you're setting up the rest of your life. Okay, that's where you become successful. The people who tell you that being being 20 are the best years of your life, I mean, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but the people that are probably telling you that are probably 40 years old, overweight, and not very successful. <laughs> okay, no, your 20s should be the years where you are sacrificing for a better life in the future, okay? Just get your money up, man, all right? Get your money. Don't spend it on that shit, okay? That's my advice to you. Do not spend it on that shit, okay? If you want to go out and drink, sure, do it one, two times a month, all right? Then people that go out every weekend flexing the bottles of champagne and shit, they ain't got no money, all right? They've got no foundation. I'm sorry to say that. I've got to be really harsh. A year on, 
I have been going to the gym now for a long time. I'm eating well. I feel good. I'm getting every hour out of my day. I've also worked a job, a full-time job in that time. I made a good amount of savings that probably would have gone down the drain on alcohol had I still been drinking it. Here I am now, a year sober, and it comes down to now being the question that I said I was going to answer. Will I ever drink again? The answer is, why the hell would I? Why would I drink again? There are no benefits to it. The only time I would drink again, I guess, is if I hated myself and I wanted to hurt myself, which I don't. Alright, I found self-love. And if you haven't found it yet, you will find it. If you don't know who you are yet, that is fine. There's so many people out there telling you that you should be yourself. But what if you don't know who you are? Okay, just be wild. Go crazy. But just be careful, man. If you're doing well in school right now, or uni, or you're working a full-time job, and you're smashing it, just keep going. It will pay off. I know it feels now like it's not ever going to pay off, but I promise you, if you keep working at it, it will pay off, and you will win in life, okay? But you need that discipline. You do need it. And there's so many people now that don't have it. There's so many people that you're competing with that are going out every weekend drinking. And trust me, in this day and age, it is not that hard to be above average, okay? It's not that hard. The standard of men and women have dropped massively, all right? Trust me, work hard and you're already levels above everyone else. Go to the gym three times a week. You are levels above everybody else. Trust me, okay? Keep at it. I hope you liked the gameplay. I hope this video had some value to you. I hope you wanna see another episode of this where I talk about vaping. Let me know in the comments if this has been helpful. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. And until next time, bye.